Hey, welcome back to the three ply cord. As you saw in the thumbnail, today we're continuing with the comic series and we are going over two of my favorite comic books of all time. Vampires Everywhere and Destroy All Vampires. Well, let's not delay and let's jump right in. In 1987, the comedy slash horror movie The Lost Boys hit the theaters. And while this video is not a movie review, I highly recommend anyone who has not seen this film to do yourself a favor and watch it. During the film, there is an iconic scene at the comic book shop. These two comics make an appearance in the movie. However, they were never real comics. They were just props produced by the now defunct Blackthorn Publishing. In two weeks time, artist Chris Miller created original comic book illustrations based off Marvel's Tomb of Dracula. Five total comics were originally created for the film. In 2019, Bottleneck Gallery published an official release of the prop replica comics. They were produced using original source material used to print the comics for the film. With no real narrative, they were put together in the most logical order. The first eight pages are in color, while the last eight pages are the same as the first eight pages, but they're just printed in black and white. The printing, according to the Bottleneck Gallery website, was a limited edition, although it is not specified on how many copies it was limited to. This set was sold for $15. Bottleneck also released a lenticular 3D set, which included custom 3D glasses. This was also a limited edition set, limited to 750 copies, and this set was sold for $25. As of now, both options are currently sold out on their website. I reached out to Bottleneck to ask what the original print run was and if there were any plans on running a second printing, but they never responded to my emails. Rabid Weasel Studio also released a prop replica of both comics. According to the website, the art for this project was hand-drawn to match the original as close as possible and then scanned and colored in Photoshop. I found a review of this book online and found it to only be five pages as opposed to the 16 pages from the bottleneck gallery. As these rabid weasel versions were not an official release and more of a fan's labor of love, there was no limit to the production of these, shall we say, bootlegged comics. They are still available now on his website and easily found on the internet stores including eBay and Etsy. If you're just looking for a cool display piece, these rabid weasel versions will do just fine. However, if you're a collector like me, there is no substitute for the official release. Okay, so you're ready to make the purchase, but how do you know what version you're buying? As previously stated in this video, the first difference is the thickness. The bottleneck version is 16 pages, while the rabid weasel version is a much thinner 5 pages. Also, it should be noted that the official release is a thicker quality paper, while the bootleg is printed on newsprint. However, if you were making an online purchase, it may be difficult to determine the comic thickness from the photos or what quality the paper is. So the easiest way to tell them apart is the artist's signature that's right on the cover. The bottleneck comics will have C. Miller, or simply C.M., while the Rabid Weasel release will have R.W. Of course, side by side, you will be able to notice many differences, but the artist signatures are the quickest giveaways. So let's start with the values of the Rabid Weasel replicas. As previously stated, these copies had no limit to their production and are probably printed on demand. They are still for sale on the website rabidweaselstudio.co.uk. And the set will run you 30 pounds, which translates roughly to 37 US dollars minus shipping. You can also find them for sale on eBay and Etsy, among other online stores. The bottleneck replica is much more limited and very difficult to find. I was able to track down a set for sale at Rotterdam Comics in Rotterdam, Netherlands for 150 euros, roughly 157 US dollars. I cannot find a lenticular 3D set. So if you happen to know where I can find one, drop a comment down below and let me know where I can make the purchase. And if you remember at the beginning of this video, I said that there were five copies 
originally printed. Now that is unclear if there were five total comics or five of each, Vampires Everywhere and Destroy All Vampires. But nonetheless, one of the original comics used for the movie is on display at the actual comic shop that the movie was filmed in, a comic shop called Atlantis Fantasy World in Santa Cruz, California. The value of these are, frankly, they're undetermined due to the extreme rarity and could fetch six figures or more, in my opinion. Well, that wraps it up. And as you can see, I have the bottleneck versions. If you enjoyed this video, please consider liking it and subscribing to my channel, and I'll see you on the next one. Thanks and God bless.